What's up, everybody? Welcome to another GrayscaleGorilla.com podcast. As usual, we've got Nick Campbell. Hi, everybody. We've got Chris Schmidt. Hey there. And we are ready to jump into all the crazy things that have happened over the past week, uh, maybe even longer. I think two we, weeks. I think two weeks. We we were a little bit out of commission working on our new site, which is going to be live very soon. So don't worry about that. Um, but there's so much going on. I feel like we could at least we could spend two and a half hours on this podcast, but we're going to try to condense it all down into one hour. Yeah, the uh, heavy heavy hits, man. We, there's a lot of announcements. We got new hardware. We got new software. We got uh, yeah, the new GSG site. We're s- still hustling on here. Um, it's big, man. What uh, what do we tackle first? What do you think everyone out there is, is saying? <sighs> talking about Microsoft. Let's go chronological. Right. Ooh, this is good. So the first thing that happened was the Mac. Was it the Mac was first, right? No, no, it was no. the Surf, Surface. Surface uh, Studio. Sur- you're yeah. right. Okay, so Surface Studio was announced first. Yep. Along with their slew of of um, things that they talked about. Of, so, of weird 3D applications. Right. So here's the takeaway that I wanted to get you guys' reaction on this. Um, Microsoft came out of the box saying, this is a creative update like it, we're 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 going to be the the creative company now which is you know kind of a a bit different from where they were before so everything that they were doing was like trying to po- point towards that like north star of creativity putting 3D in your word docs and like having this like 3D store thingy that you can like go get assets and like take pictures of your whatever sandcastle and bring it into printing and all, all this crazy stuff. That's how they started it. Where do you, what do you guys think about Microsoft kind of, wh- why do you think they did that? It could be, I mean, it could be <clears throat> seeing what Apple's doing and, and trying to s- step into those shoes a little bit. I mean, I think the, the, big, the big talk over the last few years is how Apple's uh, l- moving away from that pro creative market, um, which they kind of, that was always their like best supporters and um once it's you know it seems like now that iphone and ipad and all that stuff kind of takes away from that that message so maybe maybe they're literally just saying like apple's dropping the ball on this let's step in and see what happens let's pick it up i I, but well i mean if we're only talking the software that they're talking about updating right now um i i don't know i i think that they're just being goofy i think that (laughs) <laughs> it's like, oh, 3D is popular, and we're playing with these VR goggles and whatnot. So what are some apps we can force 3D into? So you can have, make a send a gift card in an email, and it's going to rotate the image around. Like, I feel like almost uh, 95% of it was novelty. So like, you, like these you, think it's just, you think it's like that whole thing is just gimmick? It, I don't think it's gimmick, but it, it's the same way I feel about VR, where it's like it's just it's not quite happening, and everybody's like, "Oh, what? Like we can do 3D? We have this, you know, maybe this 3D engine, this new code that does 3D, and we can implement it everywhere. Where can we put it?" But at the end of the day, how often are you going to do those things? Like, how right. often are you going to, in your PowerPoint presentation, going to put a rotating 3D smiley in there? It's just like, okay, it's neat, it's cool, it's a, it's a good option, but like I don't feel like they've really unlocked any creative tools that I can use, so I don't think. No. They're approaching the pro market at all. I feel like this is your grandma putting 3D clouds in her photo. <laughs> right. No, the that's first a good step. point. That's a that's a really good point. The idea behind the update is really about trying to uh, inject creativity or implied creativity, I guess, in in programs in which are not known for being creative. Right. So like nobody's using. Uh, I'll probably be corrected but ms paint not very many people are using that beyond the the businessy people of the world but that being said okay so yes it is a bit hokey and weird that i can now bring in a 3d rotating sandcastle into my wordpress dot or my word um <laughs> wordpress <a> little <laughs> freudian been, slip you've there been in WordPress <laughs> i've been in long. it way too much dude <laughs> um so yeah but here's the thing here's my opinion on this is that I'm applauding, I'm not applauding their integration of crappy 3D into Word documents and and, uh, PowerPoint presentations. I am applauding the effort 
I am applauding the direction that right. they're attempting to steer the massive sure. ship. I think it's cool that they're actually thinking about the world in a more um, uh, forward kind of way. I mean, you have to remember, this is the company that owns at the Xbox and that whole platform. So they do understand the gamification of the world and how 3D can, how people are just being completely um, onboarded in, in 3D in terms of the idea of wor working in interdimensional rotations and things like that. Like people are, kids and stuff are coming up learning that stuff, they know it. So it's only smart to kind of build tools that, uh, that work that way. Right, and that's, that's where I think Apple not keeping that in mind is really pulling people away from that whole platform. Like, oh, for yeah. every creative person that wants a Mac Pro is an entire family full of iPhones and FaceTiming and photo sharing and, like, all the stuff that a Apple actually cares about. Mm -hmm. And for every person that falls away from that platform, it's not just a piece of hardware. It's It's potentially the entire family because no, right. it's driven through like the the usually the person that has all the technology in the first place and you know what oh. we're now we're now a google household because of these reasons or we're now a apple household because of these reasons hmm. and 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 that's why this the the whole thing is incredibly frustrating i think if we take away the software just for a second and and think about our you know what we actually use day to day and a lot of the gimmicky stuff which which Apple has tons of gimmicky stuff too, like that nobody uses on their on their like, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, keynote presentations. But if we just focus on like, okay, the work that we sit and get things done, we're on we're online. Obviously, we we are doing the company stuff, but we're also doing Cinema 4D. We're doing Adobe apps. A lot of this stuff works on both sides, and it's making it easier and easier for people to jump between it. And really, the difference is the is the ecosystem. Right, so you're losing your Apple ecosystem, and you're losing all of and the operating system, which I know a lot of people have opinions about. And if we think about those two things, how is how are all these announcements affecting that directly? If we well, that's a good the, that's a good segue. Let's let's segue now from them announcing you know creativity as their direction and talk about the hardware, which was the, the hardware. The biggest announcement of the Microsoft um, show was really the Surface Studio, which essentially is a giant 28-inch screen, awesome monitor that you can tilt down and draw on and write on and move and all this crazy stuff. It's like and a it, high-end Cintiq, a Wacom Cintiq, but it's, it's also a computer. Right, yeah. And it's it's also under $4,000. It's decent hardware, not the latest processors, but pretty pretty close. Um, and it's, uh, it looks pretty sweet for everybody I, it, that I've well, for, uh, talked to likes it. Dude. Uh, well, first of all, I was utterly blown away by that. You do not expect that kind of thing from Microsoft. And I don't know how good it is, but there is that commercial where they use that song from Willy Wonka. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Uh, the pure, pure imagination, imagination song. Yeah. I have watched that commercial like five times. <laughs> Just because the commercial <laughs> is beautiful. Well, like, did they I, show I, the commercial during the presentation? I don't even know. It's the first thing I saw because I didn't pay attention to the these as a, everything as is getting announced. And who expects oh, to okay. pay attention during a Microsoft event? Not me. Well, <laughs> yeah, um, it's not on my calendar. And then suddenly, yeah, and then suddenly oh, the stuff Chad. starts popping up, and that commercial. <laughs> Like I don't know, it's just the most beautiful commercial. I love I love the shots and the music and the way everything is timed together. And there's that moment when they pick up the dial. And then right. the camera cuts away. And it's like, wait, why did they pick that up? And then it, it flies around the top of the yep. computer, and they place it on the screen, and, you're and it like, starts the interacting future! with it. It's like, oh. Well, uh, here's a so I I, I don't want to get off this yet because I want to hear what Nick thinks about the the studio. But you, you mentioned the commercial, so yes, absolutely, that commercial is a really powerful commercial. And here's another thing that another reason why I think that these two companies, Microsoft and Apple, have completely almost flip flopped is because Apple used to be known for these commercials that were really compelling and really interesting, and yeah. always kept you like you know wanting you know that that thirst for the for that product. And I feel like they. Were, they released a commercial during their event that was so bad that I was just like, this is just masturbation. Like, it's just Johnny Ives, like, talking about crap. 
And it, it just became kind of apparent to me that one company was really interested in how I was going to use a product, and the other one was just interested in bragging about, you know, some form factor BS. But anyway. Well, yeah, Nick, I, I just, just to, to wrap up on that note. Sure. That's what I've been telling people is Microsoft came out with the most beautiful Apple commercial I can remember, and then Apple is now reminding me of, like, HP. <laughs> That's totally true, dude. That's totally true. With the slow camera moves around everything, and like it's just th- yeah, those, it's just like oh look, look at this little look at this novelty we have, and we're gonna like talk about all of our stuff. And and I don't believe them. I don't believe Apple anymore. When they're like oh no. like when they you know, and they've been doing it for years, where it's like oh Safari, the greatest browser in the world. And it's like everybody laughs mm-hmm. because like like I just opened up Safari and there's features. And it's like wait, how do I do this? Why is this so clunky? I know. Like, but anyway, uh, let's get Nick's opinion. Then. Nick, what do you think of the Surface Studio? Oh man. I don't know. I I I I'm scared. I'm a little scared. Well, of it. don't be scared of it. Just like form factor. Do you like the way it looks? Do you think it's an interesting way to work? I you know for me the like giant screen was never compelling to me. Uh, I I never was a drawer though. Like I I use a Wacom for everything I do, but that's just a mouse replacement. So a giant screen to me seems a little cumbersome just as a form factor, um, unless you literally just draw all day. Um, well, how big is your screen right now? It's 27 inch iMac. It's the same. But, it's only a 28 inch, I think. Yeah, but you but you manipulate it by touching it. I don't do that. Like my hands are not touching my screen or right. drawing on. Well, it. Well, I mean, right? here's the here's the counterpoint to that. You don't have to touch it. Yeah, my this Razer laptop I have it has touch screen features. It's activated if and you're I've not never in, used it. Because yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right. Some people may not ever want to touch their computer that way. Um, but like, uh, or anyway, I don't know. Um, but if you, uh, if it's there, I mean, here's the thing, take away the touch. It's still a pretty dope machine. It's basically, um, a really super nice display. It's a, it's an iMac for PC. It's a PC iMac basically with better specs. So that is, is kind of interesting, right? Yeah. I, so I tend, I'll just, I'll be straight up. Like I haven't seen that commercial. Um, I, Oh my didn't God. watch the I didn't watch the announcement. I I don't really know a lot about it. I saw the dial thing. Um, that's just not how I. And maybe maybe this is why. Maybe <laughs> Chad. Maybe you should. <laughs> maybe there's a good reason you're doing the intros. Maybe I shouldn't be on a podcast talking about <laughs> hardware and software. But I'm kind of. I want to. I want to hear what you guys think because that's how I learn best. I I learn best by smart people that are interested in this. That that get through. That can watch and are interested to sit through and, and watch the commercials to then tell me what they think. Mm-hmm. So that's, I, I actually have less of an opinion on this than I do just really interested in what you guys think. For me, it's, it all just is a little bit of the starting of writing on the wall of the, of people leaving Mac. So I'll, I'll share this. This might be interesting to, to users and I'll get real numbers soon. Already we're seeing on Grayscale Gorilla more people visit on Windows. Oh, yeah. than in the past, right? So we're already getting more uh, users that are coming through using Windows than ever before. Um, same with phones. Like, you know, it, it, shows, it shows what phone they're viewing stuff on. We don't get a lot of people on phones on our website, but those numbers are also changing. So for me, the, the conversation is not necessarily this, this specific piece of hardware or software. It's this general flow of, like, what's going to happen to this community that, really came up in in Mac and Cinema 4D world and how to, what's going to happen what are they with that gonna transition do? because Mac, can, maybe we talked about this last week but M- Cinema 4D was always the th- like if you were into 3D and you were into Macs uh, Macintosh you, you couldn't use 3DS Max you couldn't use Maya you couldn't use these other programs so Cinema actually popped up for me as something that was right. awesome and that ran on a Mac and didn't look like a spaceship when I opened it. It looked fun. And all the other things I talk about. So for me it's it's a it's a much bigger um I, I'm interested in the how these little things and you know, however they transition into this pro market or mm-hmm. consumer prosumer market or whatever they they're this creative market. My interest is is going forward how this transition works. For, I think you're, uh, for your me mi- and everybody. We're getting a little bit of feed- feedback from your mic Yeah, or we're getting some zaps from you, Nick. Zappity zaps. Yeah, sounding l- robot You want to look, um, look at your mic there while we uh, tackle this huge yeah. issue? 
Yeah, um, and we'll, we will continue. I mean, well, we can start transitioning to the Mac stuff. And and Nick, I put the link to that Microsoft commercial in the notes, so you got to watch that because it's man. The okay, visuals, I will. Oh man, when when the camera pans to the side and with one finger they just push the screen over, it's like that. That is presentation wise, you can't you can't top that. No, it was good. Is, is my audio back? To normal uh, I it, it was it was we'll sporadic see. yeah it was it was kind of coming in and out yeah the thing for me so the surface studio looks killer and i want one just because it looks amazing and i want to play with that dial and stuff um but i think that what you're gonna see is like somebody was asking me before it's like well how you know what about a cintiq like what is the you know why would i not why would i buy this over a cintiq and the cintiq is different the cintiq is it's a professional illustrator's thing and it's and it's something that you plug into a system it's not a system onto itself so it this the the surface studio is for somebody that may be looking to get into drawing more on their screen or doing textures or sculpting or something like that but it's not necessarily if you're a professional artist using a cintiq i don't know if this is necessarily a good move for you because it's not going to have the level of sensitivity that you're used to on a cintiq it's not it's just a different experience but How, isn't like isn't this this is this whole mach- this is a whole computer, and it's cheaper than the high-end Cintiqs. That is correct. Yes. So that that's impressive. I, I'm, I'm not I'm not going to buy one. If I was in the market for a new computer, like I might I might look at it. The mm-hmm. hardware isn't like you said; it's not amazing. It's not top of the line, but uh, yeah, looked, I don't know. I, I mean, think it, it's neat. I, like, like, I'm curious what everything's going to look like in a year or two. Like, is Cintiq going to have to respond to this? I don't know. I I, I don't know what they'll do. They're pro- my guess is they might like team up with somebody. Maybe that maybe they'll team up with uh, Microsoft on the next one and come up with a Cintiq edition or something. That would be interesting to see them do that. Um, I I personally think that if I had money right now and I needed a computer, I'm not sure I would. I'm I'm a little bit hesitant to go 1.0 because exactly. It's I'm just always it, same. it just like to me from every like i'm i'm kind of a nerd in this way so i'm i'm following people on youtube that are like literally taking their cameras to microsoft stores and doing reviews in the store like cuz nobody can get one yet so there's people out there like literally going in with their cameras and say, showing them like using it and everything that i've seen the dial looks so cool but there's one thing that they didn't really address that you can see it in some of the videos that dial's not magnetic i think it just has some sort of like um, frictiony. Sticky, frictiony texture to it, right? So yeah. if you rotate, you can see in a few videos they'll have they'll, somebody will set it down, and it'll just sort of like start to glide down the screen <laughs> with their if you're not holding it, and it'll just start to like slide a, slide away. So these are Super all glue. it's all these like these SAT small annoying things that are going to keep me from wanting to get that until they work out the little kinks like that and but figure it out. Do you think off. though, like I, I've always thought the touchable screen your mic's it, still it, doing it your mic is oh, still bummer popping. well I, I, i'm guessing it's not recording it that way on this side because i'm hearing myself okay. hopefully so let's uh let's, let's ignore it still All right, we'll hear ignore me. it we'll ignore it um the the actual form factor and that whole thing it, it, it all just comes back to me like about the whole operating system like are people gonna do it because to me this is like the ipad or this is like not a thing you do you, i guess do you see cinema 40 users like leaning over their screen and touching it with a with a pen you know what no. i mean like how does that affect uh, our industry i think it does i think it here's how i i didn't so i bet you know when the when the cintiqs or not sorry not cintiqs when the when the wacom's came out i bet a lot of people thought well why would i want to use a pen i already have a mouse like you know what i mean so it's like a a different way of of interacting with your computer that you're probably not you don't really know the usefulness until you've lived with it for a while and i have a touchscreen laptop chris has a touchscreen laptop and the one thing that i do like about a touchscreen is the ability to quickly zoom or fly through a website or immediately like pinpoint something that i'm interested in um, I've never actually used it for anything 3D because it doesn't have a pen. Like I can't use like a pen, but mm-hmm. I can see myself like if I had one of the studios like getting into um, texture painting and like literally like bringing the screen down and like painting a texture or maybe a sculpt where I'm sculpting a 3D model or something. So I think that it is an interesting thing to think about. I don't think it's a um, I don't think it's a make or break feature, but. The, the OS, getting back to what you're saying about the OS, yes, we are having this, like, 
migration is happening due well, let's to... Talk, let's talk about the Apple stuff so we All can right, yeah, kind of idea. properly uh, All right, so let's do that. compare. So MacBook Pro, what do you guys... What are your thoughts on the touch bar? Does it change your life? <laughs> <laughs> no. At a glance, it annoys me. I don't know. <laughs> me too, and I don't even own a Mac. There, okay. Yeah, well, this I, is actually interesting. And it's kind of good because Nick Nick hasn't transitioned out yet. Like Chad and I are both on PCs now. I don't know if you were ever on a Mac, Chad. Uh, no, I was long, long. Okay, long so time you've been ago. PC for a while. I am yeah. newly PC within the last six months, and now Nick is the holdout. I'm always so we've the, got this weird I'm transition. Always the old grumpy guy. But like, hey, I, I, first one thing of all, at a time. I mean, it's been a while since, like, I've been super excited for Mac events. I used to watch everything. I'd watch, like, the iOS updates. I'd watch all the OS updates. I would watch mm -hmm. uh, the hardware for iPhones and iPads and the hardware for computers. And I just don't really care that much anymore, like, because there hasn't been anything cool and new in a while. I think it, like, it, it could be, um, like, the, the, the industry itself. Well, remember this, right? Computers used to be, like, an aisle in the bookstore, and computers used to be like, oh, you're into computers. Oh, you're into other things. And now, literally, computers surround almost everything everyone does for a living, right? So we've lived through this transition of, like, computers being this specific kind of nerdy thing to now, like, l almost literally everybody interacts with a computer for their job every day. Um, yeah. So well, the computer industry has kind of replaced the auto industry in terms of like how many people are paying attention to it. Yeah, and but what that also does is it stabilizes it in a way that is the the growth period of computers and the internet is still happening, but it's uh, to me it's at a point where it's less about what these machines are capable of and more about the what uh, I'll, I'll 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 speak for myself. I've never been a computer geek where I follow the chips and the RAM and the hard drives, and I only learned how to build my own machines because I wanted to play Unreal Tournament faster, right? And it wasn't ever for the love of the technology. So for me, computers are amazing for what I could do with them and never about the technology of it. I've never enjoyed it. And, the, and part of the reason I got into Macintosh was I was able to do things with a Mac early on, 2000, 2001, that you couldn't do at the time with a standard PC. So things like Final Cut made, you know, editing DV footage and firewire cables made it possible to, to start working on these things on a Mac where you literally mm -hmm. couldn't on a standard PC. Same thing with Pro Tools. I was into Pro Tools. I got into audio hardware, you know, um, running uh, audio plugins live. None yeah, of that yeah. could happen without the Mac. Um, so I came at it from what is possible with this machine, not and not necessarily the actual hardware. So now looking back at it, I feel like I'm I'm in the opposite situation where things are actually uh, more capable to do on a on a on a PC than a Mac at this point. Especially if we're talking about all these new renders and Octane and all this stuff. But now I'm so entrenched in the workflow, in the operating system, in the in the you know the the fact that everything syncs between my phone and my iPad and my computer here and my computer at home like all the all the yeah. secondary things is what's keeping me tied to this platform where I would literally be able to work and render faster in a new on on like PC hardware right now so I, I, I think I'm a little unsure of what what to do or what other people should even think about doing well, I think it's, here's the thing, like Apple has, and I'm going to get on my Apple soapbox for a minute, but Apple has given up on everybody. Oh, on, on, utterly. And, and they, they just are so... Well, not everybody, just people in our group. Yeah, okay, yeah. so let's just, let's just clarify that. I don't mean everybody. I mean, they still, they're selling, they, they're in the business of selling phones and, um, and high-priced laptops to people that don't know any better. And whoa, it, whoa. I'm sorry, sorry. No, no, that's a, um, but I think that's a fair <laughs> it's statement. A fair, it's a fair statement. So they yeah, let me see your and, retina screen, guys. Let me, let me, let just, me, let me just tell you this. Like right now, the, um, uh, the, th what happened was, and I don't have anything to back this up, just my stupid opinion. I might be completely wrong. But I think when Jobs passed away, uh, so did the common sense of Apple. And... Now we have a bunch of people running the show that are putting form before function. They're not listening to their customers. They're treating their customers poorly. Um, they they are continuously, you know, 
thumbing their nose. Is that a term? I think it's a term. Yeah. Thumbing their right. nose at consumers um, and just doing whatever, they, and doing whatever they want and, pro- and professional users. And, and so I don't know about you, but I don't want to support a company like that. I don't want to be a, I don't want to have to sit there and like wonder and start a petition to whether or not they're going to upgrade a system that I'd make a living on. I'm just going to find a new system to make a living on. 100, 100%. Have you guys seen the video? It's, it's a video from years ago. Uh, where Steve Jobs is talking about what happens when a company is taken over by the marketing people, <laughs> and like it, it, it's 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 a super like ironic video because you watch this video and it's like twenty years ago, and it, it sounds like Steve Jobs is scolding current day Apple. I bet and you it, there's no edit, no cut. It's like five minutes, and I'll, I'll put a link in there. Five minutes of. Steve Jobs scolding Apple as they are right That's now. That's amazing. That is, um, I want. I want to see that because when I, here's the thing, man. I bought the. Uh, I bought the the uh, Apple TV, the new one. We got the, mm-hmm. the new Apple TV. I picked up the remote and I. Th- I said to myself, "This is post Jobs. This has to be post Jobs because this is the worst design I have ever seen in a piece of hardware designed by Apple ever." And you, and the same goes for the iPhone Seven. I look at it and I'm like, "This is a, a, somebody fell asleep. This is just not an interesting phone. They've they're taking away things. They're not. They're just taking doing away every, things. They're, they're, it's That's just the ter- biggest thing. It's terrible. And and then when the MacBook Pro announcement came out and I saw that stupid Touch Bar, I'm like, "Really, guys? Like." That's what you come up with. It's like, come on. Like, I, I think a lot of people would sacrifice thickness of your of your laptop for more for some USB ports. Hello, <laughs> right? I mean, I, I I know everybody here, every professional user would rather have a half inch of thickness and USB three ports down the line than to have to carry around a bunch of dongles. A lot of very expensive dongles. The We've moved so far. It's so frustrating. I'm remembering things that were frustrating me when all the Apple stuff was being announced. First of all, and and Nick, you were kind of talking about you feel like you're seeing the beginnings of a migration. I feel I feel kind of the opposite. I feel like, you you know, you get that like bell graph. Mm -hmm. I feel like we're right at the top of that. Like the transition has been ramping up. And this was the moment when we're crossing that line because. My entire Twitter feed through the entire Apple event and for the rest of the day, like oh, my Twitter feed is almost entirely motion graphics people like in Chicago and around the world. I did not see a single positive tweet. It was all people being frustrated and venting and yelling and like we've been ignored like the pro. I mean, we're talking about MacBook Pros, not Mac Pros, because they don't make those anymore. Yeah, that's like, not like and when the Mac, when the old one came out, they were like, "Oh, we know we're way behind, and we know this is expensive, and we know it's no better hardware than what we came out with like four or six years prior." But don't worry, we haven't forgotten about you. And now, how many years have gone since that happened? Since the trash can came out? Oh yeah, four, four like, years. Like maybe? we are, mm-hmm. we it's been utterly forgotten. Like and. It frustrates me, and I, I don't know this factually, but it's just my vibe, that for a long time, like, Apple wasn't overly known. Like, people did, a, lot, a lot of people didn't have Apple hardware or the Apple software. And it was the professional creative market that was like, no, we are sticking with Apple. And we stayed with them through the dark years. Yeah. <laughs> and then they're like, oh, look, we've got all these shiny iPhones we can sell to more people. Instead of having, like, a separate division that's going to be like, okay, let's just keep all the laptops running the best we can and all the Mac Pros working the best we can, they're like, nope, let's just not even worry about that anymore. Forget it. Like, we'll, we'll keep pretending like, like what is it, like Final Cut and Safari and all these things that oh people my God. aren't when they using showed, anymore. When they and, showed and now Final they're insulting Cut. us. You can't say these things. We know they're not factually true. Well, they're it's not talking, talking because, to us anymore. Yeah. Not did you watch the show? Did you when the person came? This is this is what killed killed me. I tweeted about this while it was happening. So they brought out in the Mac event a professional editor using Final Cut. Do you guys know any professional editors that use Final Cut? I don't. Yeah, they moved away. Most I of don't. Them. They're they're I mean, all no, no. on fi- they're all on Premiere or all they're on, they're still on Avid. The other thing that made me mad is they brought out an artist who complained about not knowing what a transfer mode was, like a blending mode in Photoshop, and that really said to me, "Wow, like Microsoft is over here pushing the boundaries of like VR and, and having a, an office person 
like taking a 3D scan of a sandcastle. And on the Apple stage, we got somebody who's confused about blending modes. Yeah. It's I, like, it's like, what? Like, you used to not talk down to people, Apple. You used to, like, push and, like, you make people more creative and want to do more, produce more, create more. And now it's almost like you're making excuses for, uh, you know, you're almost like talking down to us. And I think the audience, we're too smart for that now. Yeah, I, I, I'm just confused. I, I, I'm, I'm bummed. I'm, uh, I'm, I kind of want, I kind of have my head in the sand a little bit about a lot of it. I'm just kind of hoping it all figures it itself out. But I, I just know something's, something's gonna happen. Some, something with a blue LED uh, is gonna be on my next machine, and I'm really sad about it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, uh, yeah. For, I mean, literally. My first Mac was 2000, so you know, yeah, it's a I long mean, it, time. Yeah. It's a, it's a, still is an amazing OS. Like it really is yeah, a, a I killer wish I could OS. Use the OS. And that's the thing. I think a lot of people, um, when they transfer, like if you're going from Mac to PC, like I was watching some guys uh, vlog about like how he's making the transition, and it was funny to me because he was like. I'm, he, he had this mentality that I just am not used to because I use my PC to basically drive programs that I've bought, okay? So like Cinema 4D, Photoshop, all that sort of thing. I don't use my PC for its apps. You know what I mean? Like I don't use the Windows app store to get the Twitter app or the Facebook app or this app. I literally use it to drive the programs that I've bought and obviously Chrome. Um, and I think that's a really weird thing for Mac people to get their wrap their heads around because right. you're, you're literally just using the OS as a launcher. Like You just have to get that in your head. Like, I'm using Windows 10 as a launcher. That's all I'm going to use it for. And if you have that mentality going into it, you'll be a lot happier about it because you're not going to expect the OS to do some crazy thing that the Mac OS did. Yeah, but I'm looking at you know things like ScreenFlow, which I'm using right now to record, that I have literally like spent ten years learning to to make like great tutorials and and all that stuff. But even actually, now that I think of it, a lot of our new stuff is all Premiere now, right? So we're we're moving to. I mean, I'm just going to take this like a selfish thing for a second. This is a little insight. Are we, are we about to convert Nick to Is PC? this Nick slowly transitioning? Yeah, is, yeah. This, is this it? Are we about to listen to we're, this? We're live. Let's, go, let's, let's do it. I mean, I don't know if this is interesting, but it is to me. Okay, so then you got Rescue Time. That's fine. Then you got 1Password. That's over there. You got Transmit, which I rarely use anymore. You got RDM, which allows me to switch my screen. Uh, resolution easily. I'll tell you what, as I'm going through this, the biggest thing I want um, on, a, on a MacBook or on a laptop and, or, a, or a screen in front of me is Retina. I'm so hooked, I can't even look at an old monitor. Like, so, ret so you have to get... Retina is a marketing term. I get That's it. It's high it density, but high density uh, like display in a, in a, in a uh, good form factor um, would, be, would be huge for me. Um, so... I don't see the, a visual difference between my Razer and my Mac. Because Retina. your Razer is probably UHD, and that's all. All Retina is is high uh, HDPI, high DPI display. Well, so well, there's probably wait. an exact resolution. What is it? Do Mac uh, do PCs have Wi-Fi yet? Probably. Are they on Wi-Fi? <laughs> what are you, what are you, are you talking about? You still about? have to do the Ethernet for those. <laughs> are you serious right now? Oh, they've caught up. Okay, that's good. Yeah, come on, man. <laughs> I don't know. I'm looking through my stuff here, and I'm, I'm maybe I'm talking myself into it. Uh, uh, there's always that Mac crazy. specific stuff. There's, you know, getting messages is really nice to like type messages on my computer back okay, for so text that, messages. You have it's to, pretty cool. It, Microsoft Windows 10 is a launcher. So if you want to do messaging, you're going to have to like get a, get an app for it. Like I use Hangouts and I use, you know, Chrome, uh, whatever, if I'm in Facebook or whatever. But there's no like, I don't, I don't recommend using any of those types of apps in Windows 10. Um, it, it's not just think of it again as a hub a launcher to launch your programs and you'll be happier because if you start to go down that rabbit hole of trying to find mm -hmm. microsoft apps that do what you want to do you'll just be like man screw this okay uh you know but I hd but getting back to your monitor thing 
Yes, there are. Um, I'm looking at an HP Dream Color right now that's UHD. And it's 27 inch, and it's gorgeous. It's like I. It's got more color fidelity than the iMac Retina. It's not 5K, but um, it's. Uh, it's got more it's got better color accuracy so put your money into a good monitor and and you'll be you'll be fine this is heartbreaking i mean i'm, I'm sad i'm sad guys. It, it is sad man it's sad yeah. that, oh i'm that super they, sad i would love to just be buying a new a new apple mac or like a new tower jeez do you know how happy i'd be to buy a new apple tower <laughs> yeah. right i, I still have one of the fastest macs made out there with the 12 core and it's from 2010 2000 maybe 11 it's 2010 ridiculous. six years old still like one of the fastest machines they've ever and you put were, out you were, didn't you tweet out yesterday some uh was it a, a petition or some online petition to um i think it's just try uh, to convince Tim i think it was Cook a marco into... like marco arment um kind of like sad letter about about exactly what we're talking about, and basically his his take is a little bit what I uh, mentioned earlier, which I guess uh, is almost language directly from this article, which is it's not just the prosumer market you're you're pulling out, you're you're pulling out, you're removing all of like the the tech moms and dads who do this stuff for a living that also have integrated their entire family into your stuff, and that was mm -hmm. really the the best part about it is the fact that you could do professional work, high level work on these machines, but but it's also consumer friendly enough so that you can just share contacts and documents and and and, and text messages and FaceTime and all the other great things that the the platform brings to you. Uh, and it's kind of a it's kind of a little article to remind that that is why like. It's not just the professional that you're losing. You're losing entire families that have been built around the technology because you guys made it easy for us. So please what's, don't what's take funny, me away from you. I, I totally know why they wrote that. And here's why I think people need to stop writing those things because they don't care. And like that's the thing that is the hardest thing for a Mac person to un, to like – come to that come to terms with the fact that they don't care anymore like that is a really hard thing for mac people that have been on that system for 10 years to to wrap their head around and and here's the they they just if you, as soon as you just realize you just like i'm not going to invest any more of my energy into hoping praying wishing that they update that system cuz they're not going to do it i am just going to dedicate that energy to learning something i'm just going to move on and that's what I think everybody, it's like that bad breakup, you know, you, you just, you got to move on. And so many people are, you know, trying to get that petition in front of Tim Cook or trying to get somebody to respond and just answer us, just tell us if it's there or not. And it's like this abusive relationship between, it is, it's an abusive <laughs> relationship where they're manipulating you. They basically are teasing you, are, you know, are we going to release something? Are we not? We're not going to tell you. We're not going to show you. Um, and it, it. I'm on the sidelines going, I'm like the best friend who's like, she's no good for you, man. Like, why are you doing this to yourself? Like, just move on already. And it's just sad when I see these emails and stuff go around. I'm just like, oh, my God, guys, come on, man. Just maybe, like, you, maybe you could buy me a beer later and I could cry it out. <laughs> That's all you need to do, man. Just cry it I think out. I, just, I need a good apple cry. And then just I have think a good I could, apple like, cry. On. And then, like everybody that makes the switch to Windows, the first week sucks, and yeah, you're gonna does. you're gonna yeah, hate it, it. And then after that, you'll be fine. Okay, so okay, we so we went through my crisis. What is that first week? Is it just getting used to the awful operating system? It's not even awful. It's just different. It's, just it's different very enough. different. It used to be awful, though. I will say that. So it's you're better. You're lucky you're making the switch on Windows 10 and not like Windows XP or. God forbid, Windows. So I, I mean, 8. I'm assuming I'm not the only one. I'm assuming there's a few listeners out there that are maybe got into all this stuff and have their Macs and are sad about all this stuff. What I think what everyone they, on my Twitter feed. Yeah. What, okay. There you go. Like, what can what can people expect from two from from two guys that uh, Chad? You've been on Windows a, a long time, and Chris, you've recently got your it was like last year you got your first one. Yeah. And so, like, what 
what and I'm I am the biggest fanboy. Like I you know, I I'm right in the alley, dude. I they marketed to me. I bought all their stuff for years. I wrote iPhone apps like I am in I am in. What this is going to be What can I expect? Yeah, it's going to be it, I think this transition for you is going to be rougher than like trying to teach my grandparents to change over to this kind of thing because <laughs> <laughs> and, and this is for you specifically, Nick, because you've got this philosophy, and we've talked about this a lot with us coding plugins and whatnot. You just have this philosophy of, like, I just want it to work. Why is it being dumb? Just work. And everything you do in this transition is going to be oh, gosh, I'm... switching over into <laughs> – I mean, a lot of, like, the most frustrating thing, and Chad, you can correct me on these, because I, I am not an expert, but the thing that was most frustrating for me when switching over to the PC is it seems like there's two layers of everything. They want to hide the real settings behind the simple settings. And it's like, why can't I just switch my microphone? Like, where are the real settings to change my microphone from this one to this one? And oh, when you, go okay, into, when you yeah. click on the button, it's like, oh, here's your simplified settings. It's like, no, mm -hmm. no, no, no. Give me the real settings. As soon as I find the real ones, I'm happy. Right. Yeah. Uh, so that so that's a product of them trying to ironically be more Apple esque in a way because it used to be you know in the pre Windows 8 era the settings were the settings and and you just jumped in and yeah they were a little bit technical and weird but you you got right into them um, then around Windows 8 and they started to like introduce more of this like um, Metro design language they kind of went down this path of well let's just create more like simplified easy settings for people to quickly change resolution and whatnot. Um, all of the complex settings are still there under usually advanced tabs and whatnot. But you're right. There is there is like the, the simple skin, and then there's the deep kind of settings that you can get into still. Um, now, there that's probably, you're absolutely right, that's probably like the biggest hurdle is going to be um, figuring out all the nuance and weird stuff that's just kind of evolved over the past 10 years of the OS and coming in at new and not knowing that, yeah, you can get to the advanced settings if you just click this, this, or this. Not knowing that stuff is going to be hard. But, um, you know, there's YouTube. You, there's ways to figure that stuff out. Um, I, I mean, yeah, I mean, Chris, what else have you run into that's been... What's the biggest... What Give us, give, give us like, your quick top three... Um, things that were hard, and then give us three things that were like surprisingly awesome. Uh, well, I, I don't want to be too wishy washy on this, but I'm still I'm splitting my time almost evenly between my Mac, my MacBook Retina, uh, and the PC laptop. But where like I've I've installed one version of Cinema on here, I've got like the streaming thing. Oh, a thing that's a big pain in the butt was trying to get this thing to screen capture and get a resolution, get exported. Like just finding like the application uh, because oh, when you're on an Apple, like it always feels like when you're installing something, it's very real, it's very official. You go to a page, you download like the DMG, you drag it into your applications, it's there. And everything on the PC, I'm like. You feel like you're downloading a virus no matter what you download. <laughs> Every time I feel like I'm downloading a virus. EXE, this is, this is going to hurt. <laughs> yeah. I've heard stories about this. Like, I always feel like and when I download an, an EXE, it, uh, I always feel like, is, is this a new application or is this like 10 years old? Because like, where on the Mac, it always feels like these are fresh and crisp and new and up to date. Where on, on this, it's like, oh, like this was probably made for a different OS. Is it going to be compatible? Do I need to update drivers and do so many things? So uh -huh. there's a lot of different flavors of, flavors of that that have been potentially uh, frustrating. I haven't had to run into too many of them because I use it for very specific limited things. Okay. Um, All right. So that's so installing programs. What what else? Um, well, I, of course, the first thing you do whenever you get a new machine is you open up Explorer and you download Chrome. Yeah. Um, All right. So, so that was that was pretty seamless. But I don't know. It's just little things like in Chrome. Like the, there's not a bar up on the top. There's no file menu up there. You have to click on a little tab over here. Just little tiny quirks. It takes so long to get used to. But man, Chrome certainly makes it easy to make a transition because it's like your main. It's like your bedroom moved with you. It's like imagine yeah. moving houses. It's like oh, everything's different, but my bedroom's the same, and that that makes me feel better. Chrome imagine is the if, same. If, like here's the th here's what my like. I'm just gonna go off on a real small tangent. Um, Chrome, Google. They, if they made an OS that ran, you know, like the programs that we run, mm. I would, I would so be on that. 
Yeah, I would I would be on that in a heartbeat because they I mean, they're they're kind of picking up where Apple left off, I think, where they're like, all right, we're going to create an ecosystem. It doesn't matter where you are. Everything's going to talk to each other and your settings are going to be everywhere that you are. But they're lacking the OS like they don't have an OS. And Microsoft tried to do that with their phone and their whole bullshit ecosystem. Sorry for the swear, but it really is terrible. And they are sort of trying to make up for it with the Surface Studio and all that sort of thing. But yes, I agree. Having Chrome everywhere you go is phenomenal. And that's so that that has been helpful. Like seeing, you know, we've talked about my Google uh, awakening in la- other <laughs> podcasts. I think it will be similar to that if I if I go down this Windows way, which is reluctantly trying it and seeing some of the positives, but. Even even just listening to Chris trying to install an EXE, I'm just reminded of like of uh, that computers are c- computers are still so stupid and so mm. dumb and and so <laughs> I don't confusing. agree with that. Oh well, it, well, but Nick's mentality is is it should it should know what he's well, thinking. Here's what I like when <laughs> yeah, I well, well let me let me clarify because okay. it, it sounds it sounds like I, I I expect I expect a lot from software developers it's why i it's 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 honestly why when we build software we try to make you know stuff for cinema 4d we try to make it simple and easy but also still usable for um people that need the power that's the reason we love cinema 4d right all the power is there but also hidden for the new people so that they could come in and just grab some easy things to get started but when you need it to open up and and you need it you need the power there that it's hidden but hidden in a nice way so that you can access it down the road or they don't put it in your face i they, don't think it ever needs to be I, I i never thought of it as being hidden but i know what you're i know the, the gist well, of what face, you're saying not in your face is correct it, it, it's like it doesn't it, it can be complex and easy to use if it's a good ui i mean right. that's so the, that and so that's that's the scary thing to me and that was always what apple represented to me and uh, os x and ios is mm-hmm. is giving you except like if if i click on the photos app I don't need to see my executables. And as soon as, it, and, and, and the operating system for OS X is also going in that direction, which is file systems in general are just, are just outdated and, and, and clunky. And like, it's just this old mentality yeah. of like, I put a folder in a file in here and it's always gonna stay here. Well, listen, I don't always, I don't need to see my Photoshop documents if I'm in Cinema 4D, right? So. If I'm trying to open up a Cinema 4D file, just a, like a simple idea, mm-hmm. and I think that that's what I'm gonna really miss if I if I go down this way is like the sim, the, sim, the simplification of the operating system and and only showing things that I need at the time that I need it. And I feel like Windows and and it's not just Windows; it's it's the reason I couldn't get into like Maya showed me everything, whether I needed it or not. And yeah, so from my from like a PC's user's perspective on your system, every time I open up a Mac and I try to install something, I'm always here's my mentality. I'm like, did this really install? Where is it? I have no idea where anything is on this computer, and that bugs me because I'm used to the, what you said. I'm used to knowing exactly where the files are. I'm used to being able to see where the executable was, where I downloaded it, where the program files put it, where this file ended up. I'm used to knowing where everything is. And there's a huge amount of people that love to know where stuff is on their system. They don't want the system making decisions for them on like, okay, mm. well, you don't need to see this anymore and you don't need to see that. And the professionals, I think, are a little bit more willing to know these things than the everyday user, um, which is why I think Microsoft put those little but see, I know, disagree. simplifications. I, think, I, I disagree with that. I, I think you're, you've had that experience because you've been in this industry for as long as you have, and you had to know those things. You had to be a computer geek to do your 3D job 20 years ago, 15 years ago, right? right? Like, you needed it. And now... You don't like it, it, it can help and it, it helps if you know more of this hardware. But so many artists now are picking up Cinema 4D because they want to make stuff because right. they want to not because they're computer geeks and not because they care about a video card or, or GPUs no, I or anything. I, right. So what my and, th- and this is why this is frustrating to me is, yeah, there's a certain group of people that like the, to geek out and, and are into the hardware and that's fine. But the thing that was always fun for me and the, the thing that brought me into this 
was that you didn't need to know that. I could buy an off-the-shelf Mac, I could buy a Cinema 4D, and I could get an Adobe Cloud subscription and right. not be a computer, not understand how all the pieces fit together and still be able to make beautiful stuff. And I feel like it might be a step back for a little bit if we go down this Windows platform. I'm kind of I, I kind of assumed that we were all pushing towards this thing where, you know, to use like Steve Steve Jobs analogy, where you could get in a car and hit the gas pedal and move the steering wheel and go to where you want to go. That's how I view a computer. I don't care about the oil and the engine and the torque and the wheels, and I, I could care less, and I feel like I need to. I feel like if I go back, and this is, excuse me for my rant, if I go no, back, I if I go to Windows. <laughs> this is great. This is a great podcast. <laughs> if I go to Windows, I'm going to have to learn. I'm going to have to open up the hood and figure all that crap out again, which I'm so not looking forward to. Like, I okay, well, specifically you don't have got to. in this car to go over to this other state or to this, to like go on a ski trip, not to learn about cars. No, like, yeah. And I feel like there's a lot of artists out there that, and especially younger artists, that are getting into this because they want to make pretty stuff. And they want to make that what they see on Instagram and on TV and on movie titles, and they they could they couldn't care any more about like uh, hardware and and e almost any of this news or what the Surface does. They just want to make this stuff, and that's that. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't I have agree, the answer. To that. I agree with a lot of what you said. I'm with you on that. Like I, w one of the thing there is a huge audience of people that don't want to have to think about the hardware they just want to be able to buy something and start making stuff but i do disagree with you on a few a few points that you made i do think that the younger audiences coming up that are probably now in middle school and 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 coming up they know more about operating in in a computer than any of us did so the idea that this is somehow going to be difficult for them, I don't think that's necessarily the case. I think that um, I, I think you're seeing a, a generation, a new generations that are so um, used to learning new things. The next, you know, Snapchat, the next whatever, that the, to them it's not a big deal. It's not a not a huge hurdle to get over. Um, to, if I have to like go to uh, a store and and like figure out what to get to do 3D. Now, here's what I think is going to happen. I think you're going to start to see in Apple's absence with the Mac Pro. I think you're going to start to see a lot of manufacturers. You already have seen this. Nobody's really nailed it yet. Nobody's really made that. Okay, come to my site, buy this computer for 3D, and you're going to be happy. Nobody's nailed that yet. Like Dell has mm -hmm. a 3D workstation, but the website's weird and kind of janky. You got Alienware, but you feel like you're gonna get like a case of Mountain Dew if you buy that and like <laughs> you know like you just like a, you, a bag of Doritos with yeah exactly so nobody's now now here's the thing nobody's it can be done like somebody could essentially create a workstation company an offshoot of whatever and make what you're asking for which is like a place where I can go as a 3D artist where I can say I want to use Octane so I need four GPUs and and the, you give them like the place I bought my machine from I'm not I don't know that much you think I know a lot about hardware but I really don't know a lot about hardware and I went to a guy and I said here's what I want to use it for here's my budget what can you do and he built me a system and there we go um, it really wasn't me like sitting there with parts on Amazon trying to figure it out. There are people out there that love to do that. I'm not one well, of those. Well, then that's what you do. That that is exactly what you do. Like even right now, you jump on the Motion Design Slack channel, and then you say, "Hey, hardware people, what's the best piece of hardware to get?" Or you just find that person. Like that's what I did with my machine. I went up to Casey Hupke, and I said. Yeah, like you're a PC guy. Like, what's the best machine I can get right now? And he always has strong opinions on everything. And then whatever he recommended, I was going to get because I didn't want to think about it. Yeah. So, for, but, uh, but that's what Nick want... needs. Nick needs like if yeah, Nick, if you're going to buy a machine, you should find a place like the place that I found that builds machines and have a relationship with them. That's what you, that's what you're craving. You want to say, hey, listen, this is what I do for a living. I don't want to think about the hardware. Help me out. There are people out there willing to do that. I think. It would be a fantastic idea if some computer manufacturer out there did that, yes, and and you 100%. know, and was well, and not like skewed towards the you know gator, not uh, the like uh, the gaming market, the gaming there, there, market. 
there's not a lot of when you're buying a Mac, there's not a lot of noise. You go into one page and you can see like, oh, here's like the three machines and I can upgrade that, that and that. But like there is so much noise looking at PC <laughs> hardware and then there's like compatibility questions. You don't know what's going to work with what. And then is it going to come on with the OS? There's so many questions. I totally get that. And I agree. But the last thing I want to say on, on the OS stuff there, Nick, is is I do think that. Like yes, it, I, I feel like the Mac the Mac OS is a lot more streamlined. You know, I, I like it; it's cleaner. But I feel like somebody transitioning. If you were to drop Chad in front of a Mac and then drop you in front of a PC, there's not a huge <laughs> amount of difference between the amount of time it's going to take for Chad to get comfortable and familiar on you know OS 10 as it would take for you to get comfortable and familiar on on Windows 10. Like they're not that different. And and I think a lot of this is just you're very familiar and comfortable with one, but it doesn't mean it's that much inherently better. I, I do think it's a little better, but it's not that much better. All that right. would that would be interesting. Right. And you know, mm-hmm. here's the thing, dude. Remember, this is just a means to an end. That's this true. This is just Well, yeah, but that I guess we're that's getting what it out I of our mean system. Is if I if all I had to do was open that machine and and use Cinema Four D and close it, I think I'd be fine. Like I then got, do that. I got coffee. I got a Wacom, and I got an operating system. I got files. I get it. It's all the other pieces. It's 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 when it's when something goes wrong that it's not a box full of disparate parts that came from a million different places. It when when something goes wrong on a Mac, you literally are like this happened on this year's Mac on on this operating system with this, and it's a much more it's a tighter integration. It's always been the part that I liked is. When things go wrong is really what it like why it happens. We have six people and and uh, and we all have computers that we use as a as Grayscale Gorilla as a team because the because the PC people that have the PC know enough about it to to fix it themselves. But if but if we had a company where they were not computer people, we would we would all be using Macs for that reason, right? The the whole idea that you need that you don't need an IT person to run your Macs is is what's freaking me out. Like that's the thing when it goes wrong. Like I'm okay if my bike yeah. breaks tomorrow. Like literally, my my shifting broke on my bicycle on the way to work. Biking into work, shifting is broken. You know what's cool? I got the local bike guy, drop it off, he could fix it. And with Mac, I could be my own bike guy. And mm-hmm. with PC I can't. And that's what's uh yeah i mean because you don't know it yeah you you probably it, you know you're not going to be able to troubleshoot as easily but i think that for for somebody like you that you know doesn't want to know the the nitty-gritty hardware details that's the reason why you should find a don't you're not the person that should go on amazon and build your own machine that is not <laughs> you you need to find a company similar to what I did that you can mm-hmm. call and talk to a person and say, what's the warranty on this? What if I? What if it breaks? Who do I call? All the things that make you sleep better at night. Like that's the that's the kind of relationship you'll need. Um, there and and that's kind of what I tell people that are looking to make that switch. That oh, I don't know how to make parts and like, but I'm like, you don't have to do that. You don't have to build your own from scratch you can if you're into it like more power to you it's fun it's a good way to learn but if it's not your thing you just want to order something and work like i did you find somebody that you trust simple as that just and then once you found a company that you like you make it make sure that you are uh you know buying things from them and they you know they know what you're putting on your system and if they there there's definitely going to be um there's not a there's not a store you can take your machine to. That's that that's true. There's no genius bar. There's no. Right. Um, there's none of that. Um, but uh, you know, if you buy the right machine with the right warranty from the right company, then you're fine. In fact, I think when I was at DK, we we had bought um, HPs, which were a bit more expensive than everything else out there. But the reason I always ask, like the IT guy, why did you buy these? And he's like, well, we buy them because they have this like level of support where like if something breaks, they send somebody to your house or to the office and oh, replace cool. and replace it same day. And that's guaranteed. Um, so if like, if you're out there and you're like the, the scariness of, of malfunctioning or breaking stuff is like getting in the way, there are things you can do. It's only money. <laughs> Just got to pay I, for it. Well, I, that, that has always been, one of the things in the back of my head, which is that that is partly why you're paying more for Apple stuff is the integration, but also 
the software, like the support directly. Like mm-hmm. they, oh, totally. you know, and it, if you just buy raw parts, of course it's cheaper, but wh- where do you go when it breaks? Right. So yeah. I think, you, you you're, I, think I like your mentality of like the local, you know, the bike shop person or like where, however you said yours, like get that local person that you can trust or even a company. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, maybe I'm just being a baby about it, but I, uh, I think there are there are a lot of artists out there that are not necessarily into this because they're into computers um, that might have a, like that it's going to be interesting to see what happens. So I'll, well, I'll keep you updated if, uh, if I switch or I might, I might just be crying. I might just be crying with like my <laughs> iPhone at the bar. Well, you know, there's quite a few artists too, that'll just have their PC that they're just, you know, doing mm-hmm. cinema on or whatever. And then they have right off to the side, their, their MacBook. And that's me right now. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a very normal thing for a 3d artist to be (laughs) on their 3d workstation doing their thing. And then off to the side is like their whole like little personal laptop. Can we close on, uh, I didn't actually watch the event. I mean, I watched some highlights and read some articles, but, uh, what, is there anything that you guys are kind of excited for? You think is neat about anything that Apple talked about in their event? Well, what else was there? It was the touchscreen um, MacBook Pro. Yeah. And then... They eliminated the Air. No. Oh, I see. No Air. I, To me, um, laptop is always mostly a travel machine for me. So I, I, I still enjoy, like, the iMac and the Mac Pro and, and those things. So um, I guess it didn't affect me as much. Not really. What about Mm-mm. the Adobe announcements? We didn't even touch on that. We'll have to save it. We're already at an hour. Oh, my yeah. God. And uh, I guess uh, we should wrap up. We should let people know that Chad was on another podcast. Chad, you want to uh, share where people could find more of Chad talking about uh, what are we, renders? If you're you not sick of me about? ranting about stuff uh, already, we do talk a lot about... Um, I was on this podcast called uh, Sketch Zone, and it's uh, sketch.zone and you can go check it out there. Um, it's run by a couple guys, Charlie and Carlos. Um, they do a fantastic job over there uh, with this podcast. And we just kind of, we talked for a really long time, so it's a pretty long uh, listen, but we, ta- we touch on everything from art to technology, 3D, 2D. Uh, we talk a little bit about these announcements um, and kind of have like more of a discussion about uh, what it means to more of like the 2D artists than necessarily the 3D artists even uh, in terms of like the impact of the Surface Pro or Surface Studio rather and uh, and the likes. And I think we touched a little bit about some Adobe stuff on there too. Sweet. Um, anything else we have coming up? We Probably. Obviously, but <laughs> we have, uh, those this, of you... This is a good one. Those of you, uh, those of you that are looking for the podcast uh, on iTunes. Uh, the reason we didn't upload last week's, and uh, this one might be a little bit late on iTunes, is um, we are working on this new website. So uh, a lot of the tutorials and stuff is kind of easier to, to copy over to a new site once it's rolling. Um, but uh, the podcast in particular, I'm a little anxious that uh, if we post it on the old site, transition to the new one, that it might not uh, kind of copy over properly. Um, so anyway, that's why that's why this might be a little bit late. If you're on uh, if you're on uh, listening on iTunes, if you are listening on iTunes, thank you for listening on iTunes. Give us a rating. Uh, give us uh, give us some feedback. Good, bad. Tell us to sh- stop talking about. Uh, uh, tell me tell me I'm uh, being an old man about this stuff. That's cool. Any any feedback you have is always good. We also post these on YouTube if you are listening elsewhere. And um, anything else coming up? We have an Ask GSG this week on Wednesday. Ask Chris GSG. SGSG, that's 1 o'clock Central Time. Come bring your Cinema 4D questions for Chris, uh, the new site. And, um, man, a lot of big stuff coming up in the next month. I'm really excited to get out there. And, um, man, I would like to hear from you guys real quick before we go. What operating system are you guys running? Um, How are you liking it? And if you've made the transition... Uh, please come comfort me in the comment section. <laughs> um, tell me what you thought about the transition. Say, Nick, stop being a baby. It's not as, as bad as you think. Or uh, 
oh my gosh, this is the worst thing I've ever done. I'd love to hear you guys' feedback as well. Uh, anything else before we take off today? No, nope, I'm good. Have a great week. Get out there Chad, and vote. You started oh, this yeah, one. Vote, you, should, vote. You, should, you should end. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining us again for another GrayscaleGorilla.com podcast. We will see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. <laughs>